Hello my friends, welcome again to my video channel. Today we will continue our work on the TR7 with some mechanical issues on the front plate. The PTO is in, but before we can install especially the TR7 on top, we need to flip out the front panel to do some mechanical work. If there is something to be done, I will show you in detail. I have agreed with the owner to replace the blue filter foil from the S meter. To do this it's necessary to uh, slip out the cover. It can be shifted out, but it is necessary to remove the switch. The switch here for up, down and store. And this switch can be easily unscrewed. Two screws from the rear side when the DR7 is not installed. When the DR7 is installed it can also be done but it's not so easy. Shift it out. We have here a damage on the side. You can see it. I don't know what happened. I will bend it back. Here's also something happened. Don't know how and why it happened. I will uh, take off the front handle. It's, it's rather easy. We only have to remove the knobs and the nuts. This bezel can be removed by opening this three screws and then we see the blue foil here is still not blue. The problem is that these blue foils have a tendency to fade out in the center. Let me show it here. You can always see that the center is faded out. The frame outside is original blue. I think it's uh, ultraviolet light which does this damage. I'm not sure. I don't think it is heat. But anyhow it has to go. Such a foil is rather easy to find uh, in the net. Look for uh, foils for disco lighting, for colored foils or transparent foils and similar. You will find it in the business of, of disco lighting and accessories. There I found uh, big sheets. The red one, I think, uh, can be left there. There's, there's, oops, there's obviously no damage. It is okay. I only have to review it, but here we can can see it is good. Yes, the glue has to be refixed. Okay. Next step is to remove the bezel. These three screws. Can be removed rather easy. And then this bezel can be taken off. Okay, ah, it is damaged already. We see the same same problem. It is faded out. The center is faded out, and the frame is okay. We can replace it, clean it. And now we look for the knobs. This microphone connector, however, has to be unsoldered on the rear side, otherwise I can't take it out. Now I found another modification. There are two wires on the microphone connector. One seems to be the original, which is under the cable tie, and the other one is not under the cable tie. And on the rear side, I have seen there is a, an additional connector on this cinch, it is called TX, high set, high impedance TX. Could be, because I see here also a coax cable, this is a spare input. I think that this coax connector is connected to the microphone on the front. It's not a good idea to have the microphone additionally fed through the whole transceiver. So I will uh, remove it because when someone wants to connect a uh, uh, any any signal a digital mode or similar to the input then okay he can connect it here well he has to unplug the microphone but i think that's not a big problem i will look whether this cable goes through the whole transceiver but i'm sure and yes we can see it the cable here is from the microphone connector this one it is fed here it is this one this goes to the high set. 
Yes. I will take it out. This Quirx wire is out. Unsoldered from here. And then I made a short note how the wiring is. And then I can unsolder three this uh, microphone cable and the, this is a PTT line. Then I can take out the microphone connector to the front. A small LED, which is the ALC LED, has to be unsoldered. This one, note the polarity with the correct wiring. And then we can take out the front. Okay, I have to bend it here a little bit. Something happened, don't know. Now I can clean it, also the knobs. This here is something, uh -huh, okay. I can't repair. These knobs can be cleaned. Okay, this will be the next topic. For replacing the blue foil in this uh, bezel, it's uh, advisable to first cut out all these melted points, these melted fixtures. Makes it easier to bring in the new one. I'm just thinking about it, how to fix it best. Glue is not a good idea because glue evaporates. Hot melt glue could be an option, but I think I will do it in the same way as this solution here was done with a soldering iron. Now we have to decide, I have a so-called steel blue foil, which I think is closer to the uh, original color, which faded out. This is, uh, is it is called light blue. I think it's not the correct one. This light blue is more or less in line with the faded out blue color. This I think is good for the uh, C line, but this one, the stronger one is good for the seven line. This is darker and I will take this one and try it. If it's if it doesn't fit, we, we can take it out rather easily and replace it by another one. An option would also be of course to use two of these light blue added. But then as we see this one is close to this one. So I will take this one. This blue foil is cut using a ruler cutter. The rest is easy and now I will use a small soldering tip and fix this blue foil in the, as it was done in the original. Okay, looking for some points to fix it. That's it. The new blue foil <coughs> of the S-Meet is also in place, fixed with a strip of self-adhesive tape. The red filter foil is the original one. Now we can uh, flip over the this bezel here. Careful not to bend it. And then the plastic cover can also be slided over. Okay. And now we can install the, the switches. I cleaned the switches, of course. On the outside, I think electrically they are okay. We do not use a contact cleaner as long as it is not absolutely necessary. We fix the uh, switches with the two screws. 
Before I reinstall the front panel, I have to replace the fuse by a new one. And I have chosen a fuse 5 amp fast blow. The original one was also fast blow. This is a ceramic type, which is also good for uh, quenching the arc for a DC current. And imagine when we have the PS7, which is capable of uh, supplying high current, and we need a fuse which is also capable of uh, interrupting a DC current, not only AC. This is the appropriate replacement. And not the wire as we had before. Well, now we can flip on the front panel. And fix it with screws. And then reinstall the diesel here. Now it's time to reinstall all boards. We do a short optical check whether all contacts here are okay. It can be checked easier from the rear side, whether all of these upper contacts are really up and squeezing against the plastic for, for good contact. Here we can see the modified connector of the input of the power supply for the DR7. Now we have two contacts in parallel. The outer two contacts are in parallel, which is a positive, and the two inner contacts are the ground connection, so we have totally four which is better for the uh, current uh, cap capacity and it is advisable to do this. All boards are in. I fired it up. The PA is not energized. I only fired up the, uh, the rest of the transceiver. As we see it operates. The alignment of the PTO is okay. Uh, by the way, a hint, uh, if this outer skirt is not correct that the thick one is coincident with zero, then you can uh, rotate it by 180 degrees. Take this black knob off, then you can take the skirt off and there are two uh, ridges and then you can um, align it 180 degrees and then this uh, brighter or bigger uh, index here is uh, in coincidence with zero. That's what we did. The alignment of the PTO is correct. And we can uh, do a short check with it. There are some problems caused by the missing uh, shield here. I will tell some words. 7100. Okay. It's nearly perfect. The linearity of the PTO is good, but not... Okay, we are 400 hertz down. At 300... We are 200 hertz down. At 400, we are 200 down. 500, we are 700 hertz up. Let's go 75 up. Okay, it should be 75. It's 69, and here we see 90. When we go to zero, it should be 600. We have 588. So that's the limit of the linearity. And on the other end, let's go down to zero and check the linearity outside the band. Oops. Such a turntable has sometimes disadvantages. I need a break for it. Zero, I go down 100 hertz. Uh, could, should be 900, it's 899, oh, okay. 75, it's 73. We have another zero. Should be 800. Okay, the linearity outside the specified uh, setting range of the PTO is not perfect. It cannot be expected. And now to another topic. What we see here, the S-meter deflection. It is not an alignment problem. It's a bad shielding. Of course, the shielding on top here I have not installed. 
and we do it just to demonstrate it what happens when I install it there are no screws but you see when I squeeze it down the S meter goes down to zero but it has to be solidly grounded what did I do? you see it's, it's rather difficult that's it that's the reason why we need for this shielding all screws that's why I'm getting always angry when I see that here are screws missing screws are needed to firmly press down the shielding also on the rear side there are also two screws which are missing here to have a perfect isolation between the BFO and the IF stage because the BFO uh, leaks back or transmits into the IF and that's the reason for the S-minute deflection not nice so we have to do something but in the moment I leave it as it is because um, when uh, starting the alignment procedure I have to remove it again so I don't do it Topic is to check the TR relay if there is a delay when uh, switching to transmit I don't have a real idea what it is I have an idea but uh, I cannot prove it in the moment I had this effect as the owner described to me for a second or so for one time but in general I had it not now I try it again I think there was a delay in the first moment now it's okay but when I moved the PTT activated it then I think there was a delay a short delay of a second or so now, it, now it's okay <laughs> it's a dentist effect we have seen that the relay PTT relay problem disappears when the unit is operated for a longer time that means obviously there is a component which has a problem when it's cold and when it is getting warm after some minutes of operation the problem disappears this is a typical behavior of a faulty semiconductor when it is cold it is not conductive when it is getting warm it's conductive or vice versa first suspect could be the transistor which controls the PTT relay here we have the transistor 2N3905 it is uh, controlled on the base connection from plus 10 volt transmit while these two 1K resistors the base gets conductive and then the transistor activates the relay which is connected to 13.6 volt here's a tantalum cap in parallel I've seen this tantalum cap is, is bad, is broken but that's not a problem for this uh, case it's, it's not the, the root cause for the problem we have I have to swap this capacitor but that's not a problem first I will check, I will treat this transistor with heat uh, sorry, with cold, with ice spray, with some cold and also this diode, but when this diode has a problem we would have a short circuit and then the fuse would be blown immediately so I will uh, use my ice spray treat this one and I will treat this diode this transistor is here on this side it works now a little bit on an ice spray Here's a diode. No problem. And also the other components, resistors. It works as it should. So the problem as I see is obviously not 
in this circuit click clack click clack instantaneously no problem here I will take out this unit and maybe this unit also for contact cleaning but primarily I will take out this one for this it's necessary to take out the band selector uh, rod has a long rod which travels through the whole transceiver up to here from the knob so first the knob has to be removed and then we can remove the this rod by opening these two screws and pulling it out of course I have to to mark the position of the rod and also of the knob it was 7 megahertz position and then it can be slipped out carefully very carefully the position of the switches shouldn't be altered because it's necessary later to bring them back into the correct position I will mark them when they are out now they are rather loose they are connected with two bolts here on this side but I think they can be slipped off in this direction and then be raised yes that's possible we need to remove the wiring ah, okay there's a ground straps here here and here I've forgotten to open opening some of the cable ties it's possible to shift out the unit so it hangs out like this we have access to the contacts to clean it if necessary we only have to mark the position it's for 7 megahertz plus minus a little bit has to be checked ah, okay this is not perfect maybe I, I, I uh, rotated it when I took it out okay same is obviously here now we have accessed this uh, tantalum cup I have to take out I will take out also the relay clean the contacts check the solder connections here but I think I'm quite sure it's, it's okay and I will add a new bracket a new clip for the relay to hold it in place the new tantalum cap is in the old one as we talked about was broken like this don't know what happened okay now it is not broken next step is I took out the relay and I've seen something which is not so nice let's open the case someone soldered the two pins for the coil if this is not original and such uh, solder connections are a sign that there is that there was not enough flux it is a, a dry soldering technology which is not good I'm not sure whether there was a fault in it or why someone uh, soldered or resoldered it but this could be the cause for the problem that really is uh, sometimes delayed that we do not have an electronic that we do have a mechanical problem I will activate the relay with an external power supply and see what happens. The relay is connected to a DC power source. 100 milliamp full scale. I'm measuring the current in the relay. When I increase the voltage, I'm talking about the 5 volt. And now we see at 6 or 7 volt, it actuates. I increase the voltage to 12 volt. And I go slowly down. I don't see any signs of, of contact problems. When I touch it, contacts seem to be okay. There is a short piece of wire, which is also obviously okay. On this side, also nothing happens when I touch the wire coming out of the coil. So the relay is obviously okay. 
Electrically and mechanically. Okay. Seems there is no problem. I will clean the contacts and reinstall it. During cleaning, I have seen that there is something bent inside. Difficult to show, but I think you can see it here. This flap is a little bit bent away from where it should be. So this contact is not closing perfect. <clears throat> I saw it when I checked the continuity in the relay. Active and, and not active. I saw that one contact is not closing properly. This one. The relay contact is repaired. I could do it with a tweezer. It requires some feeling in the finger and some patience. Now it is in the case again. It works as it should. I checked all contacts now. They are okay. Maybe this one bad contact which didn't close totally was the contact of the PA output because the owner told me he's, he sees a summer, some fire in the, in the relay. This could be caused by a bad contact when the power of the PA brick goes over it. This would cause some sparks. Maybe that this was the reason, but the contacts are still good. They are not damaged or burned. We can use them. Well, now it's time to uh, bring the relay back into the uh, socket and to fix the other problems. Yeah. Another problem was a missing retaining clip or bracket. It is necessary because the relay is mounted vertical in this position and which with every uh, operation of the relay it is uh, a little bit shuttered and then it, it can drop out. So I looked for a substitution. I found this one from another manufacturer of, of relays this type. Okay, I had to bend it a little bit on the top side, made it a little bit broader. But now I can, uh, but it, it is now there, it is stable. I will bring in the relay and then I need two hands. Then I can flip it over. Okay, that's it. Now we are at the end of part five. In the next part, we will focus on the PA topic, check the PA. The fan is installed in the wrong way. We will focus on the screws, which are frozen. I hope I, I find a solution for it. And of course, the last topic will be a complete realignment. Stay healthy, stay tuned. See you on this channel.